Hey guys, so we probably have kind of a sober or more serious weekend going on this weekend. There could be themes of loss, nostalgia, loneliness, isolation, feeling a bit uh, triggered, maybe fears, worries, insecurities, doubts coming up. We have a very strong Saturn influence playing out uh, this weekend and actually over the next nine days we are going to have Saturn and the South Node release endings and water signs, deep feelings and deep enmeshments and attachments that we are coming to the end of, transitioning out of, moving away from over this next nine day period. We also have black moon energy going on this weekend triggered okay fears worries insecurities doubts don't be surprised if people are lashing out a little bit projecting out um it's just a coping mechanism to try to deal with some of these more shadow side issues that we may be coming into contact with this weekend as well so all that being said you guys let's get into our chart for the weekend let's look at this energy these days coming up in a little bit more detail and see how things may be coming together for us to color our experience on the ground this weekend welcome back to my channel you guys today is friday april 14th 2023 my name is aubrey this is your astrological outlook of the weekend uh we're going to talk about the energy as it's coming through friday saturday and sunday just to get a better idea of what might be playing out for us as we go throughout the course of the weekend on an energetic level um and there's a lot to talk about this weekend we're starting this nine day window period with this exact trine playing out between Saturn and Pisces, the South Node in Pisces. This is not a new energy to us, you guys. I've been talking about this energy for a while. If you've been following me, you know, especially over the course of this past couple of weeks, we've had this grand trine playing out between Saturn, the South Node, and Mars was also within the same degree ranges in the sign of Cancer. So, you know, this is an energy where, although it has not been exact, in terms of Saturn in the South Node, it is an energy that we've been working with and that has been playing out uh, throughout the course of this past couple of weeks. One of the major indications <laughs> indicating that we are in a very transitional period, endings and beginnings, this past couple cycles has really been indicating uh, this period of endings and beginnings. And this whole 2023 year actually is a period of transition of endings and beginnings of um the end of an era type of energy and uh, like a new revolution, like a radical new beginning coming. So we are also simultaneously transitioning into the age of Aquarius. And that is also being demonstrated and represented by this particular year, 2023, this transitional year. We are moving out of the previous paradigm energetically and we are birthing ourselves into this new energetic paradigm in alignment with the Aquarian themes and archetypes and Everything associated with that, which is, first of all, what we are really talking about on a day-to-day -day basis on this channel when we look at this energy. At this particular period of time, these particular chapters in this cosmic blueprint that is always, you know, perpetually playing out, but just where we're at right now, we are in the section of the book labeled Transition to the Age of Aquarius. And when we do these videos every day, we are looking microcosm um, on a daily basis to see how the aspects that are happening are creating that transition through the energetic impacts that they're having on our psyches, how that's changing us, and how the change is happening within us via this uh, this energetic, these energetic frequency-based activations are actually causing us to play our role in creating and transitioning us into the age of Aquarius too. The age of Aquarius is an age of self-knowledge and self-mastery and, um, you know, co-creating essentially with God and universe from this consciously awake and aware place in this greater level of understanding and knowing how to use our energy in the ways to create the outcome that we want instead of sort of being subconsciously controlled by whatever programming or algorithm we have picked up throughout the course of our lives that we've been for the most part unaware of this is a transition from unconscious power that is creating the reality okay to using the power of this unconscious consciously 
to therefore consciously create this reality. We also, of course, have Pluto right now, zero degrees of Aquarius, preparing for a 20 year Aquarius transit, which in many ways will be, you know, playing its role in this whole process that's unfolding by way of helping to restore on these deeply internalized levels and with e within like the depths of our psyche and our subconscious, this sense of internalized power that is rising up, you know, through the collective of humanity, empowering the individual and therefore empowering the overall whole, empowering humanity, which age of Aquarius, age of self-knowledge, age of self-mastery, age of self-empowerment. And we're starting this out, you know, at this phase with Pluto's entrance into the age of Aquarius and also these other aspects that are simultaneously playing out and these endings that are represented by the energy that's coming together now. So that being said, we have a lot to be hopeful for. We have a lot to look forward to. We have a lot to be optimistic about in the face of or in spite of perhaps some of these more difficult endings, losses, and you know what we're having to detach from, what we're having to walk away from, this nostalgic energy, um, perhaps issues having to do with time, time wasted, time that we can't get back, what we wish maybe we would have done different, but also the wisdom that we've gained from these experiences and how we are going to use it going forward more consciously to better create the outcomes and the experiences and the feelings and the sentiments that we want to experience going forward instead of those that maybe bring up these feelings of regret or um again like things that are gone that we can't get back and the more negative low octave end of like that type of thing so you know on one hand it is signifying this release from these karmic cycles perhaps they could be you know cycles that have persisted generationally we're talking about saturn this is time this is karma we're also talking about the south node this is also karma and this is the past and it's this trying aspect. This is a facilitation. This is a universe assisting in this process. And it's happening in these water signs, okay? These, these emotional, subconscious, psychic, belief-based structures and constructs constraints that we've been existing within that have really like colored the nature of our reality and of our physical, tangible experience. The beliefs that have made our reality real in a lot of ways and that have bound us to conditions and circumstances that actually maybe had been stealing our power or preventing us from seeing our truth or preventing us from really activating our destiny and getting aligned getting in alignment with our higher selves and our true purpose and going through this process of self-actualization that is also represented through the age of Aquarius and then the transition into the age of Aquarius, anything that has been blocking growth, anything that has been blocking authenticity, anything that has been blocking value, true value and true worth. That is what is being released. That is what we're detaching from. That is what we're overcoming. That is what we are moving away from as this energy plays out, as it has been playing out over this past couple weeks, but specifically this next nine day period. I find it to be interesting as well because nine is a number of completion. Nine is a number, it's it's right before 10, which is, you know, the final outcome and also the new beginning. The 10 is an interesting number in numerology because it's the 10, right? It's it's the it's the 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 top of the pyramid, but it's also a one and a zero, which breaks down to a one, which is the new beginning. And even in the tarot, like it it's the ending, but it simultaneously indicates a new beginning, a fresh start. And when we're talking about nine, this is the stage of completion that happens right before the final manifestation. So we're talking about a process of completion when we're talking about the number nine or a process also of like greater understanding, okay? Or like a greater sense of wisdom, like sort of seeing the whole picture, the overall picture, the higher view, the higher vision. Nine days of karmic release that are opening our eyes, that are showing us the bigger picture, and that are helping us to detach, to move on, to release ourselves from this is water signs. This is, again, the feelings, the emotions, the 
deep subconscious psychic complexes, the belief systems as well, that we have been attached to on an emotional level that have held us hostage to that which would encourage and promote our true growth in alignment with our true potential, in alignment with the divine universal vision of, you know, all that we can be and all that we came to be and live and experience in this lifetime. So nine days of letting go of our previous attachments, beliefs, and subconscious programming, the psychological constructs that previously defined our reality, this of course paving the way for some new beginnings, some new foundations in alignment with authentic value, authentic growth, authentic potential, and the springboard that can propel us towards the development and culmination of those things going forward. And while we do need to kind of like embrace and surrender to the endings and perhaps even the losses or just the culmination points or you know what we are coming to the end of the road in terms of now the south node is always opposed by the north node okay if saturn is making a trine to the south node that means simultaneously that saturn is making a sextile which is another how assisting aspect to the north node so while we are at the end of a chapter or a phase or just a period of time we're simultaneously preparing to build to form to structure to lay foundations bringing us forward, moving us forward. So again, you know, I've been talking about these cascading endings and beginnings as being sort of uh, an intricate part of our experience that is playing out throughout this entirety of this 2023 year. And this weekend again, and this energy coming in with the Saturn influence, Saturn forms structures, Saturn is time, Saturn is karma, Saturn grounds things into reality, Saturn manifests, Saturn is also so the judge and the disciplinarian Saturn rules karma so you know it's just this period of time where it's like the the lessons and the wisdom that we've gained from the past redefining our future as well having to face some more like cold hard truths about ourselves about our situations about our reality and the reality that we've created and the reality that we're existing within now and what do we need to move on from in order to be more productive in order to feel more like fulfilled in order to feel like our life is more purposeful and stuff like that when we're talking about Saturn this is a, a like I said in my intro like a more serious somber influence it's about productivity and hard work and getting things done and you know it's also about success and it's also about stability and it's about universe asking us how we're going to be successful going forward based on the lessons and the wisdom that we've gained from the past and facilitating, assisting, and helping us to release ourselves and move on from the past versions of ourselves that are no longer in alignment with the growth that we are looking to um, embody, okay, with the Saturn influence as well going forward. So time of endings and transitions final goodbyes, letting go, moving on, walking away. Now there's another planet that we have to bring into this whole um, recipe formula that we've sort of got coming together energetically this weekend. And that is the planet Venus. Venus is actually playing a pretty significant, important, like strong role in what's going on with Saturn this weekend. And that is because on one hand, she is ruling the position of the North Node. Remember, Saturn in the trine to the South Node also, the sextile to the north node, the south node in Scorpio, north node in the oppositional sign of Taurus. So Venus ruling the position of the north node, of the new foundations we're laying, of who we're becoming now, of the new lessons that we're learning, of the value that we are rediscovering internally. Well, she's doing a couple of interesting things right now. For one, on Friday, which is the day that Saturn moves into the exact trine to the south node after like inching, creeping up into it over these past couple of weeks. Well, Saturn, you know, moves into the trine with the south node today, but simultaneously also moves into exact square with Venus. Well, actually, technically, Venus moves into exact square with Saturn. So we have, we have Saturn, five degrees of Pisces. 
okay? We have the south node, five degrees of Scorpio. We have the north node, five degrees of Taurus. This is ruled by Venus, right? And then we've got Venus at five degrees of Gemini. Gemini ruled by Mercury. Mercury, and this is one thing that I haven't talked about yet, but that is also a pretty significant influence right now. Mercury is also in the sign of Taurus. So Venus and Gemini, Mercury and Taurus, we also have a Mercury Venus mutual reception going on right now. That means a blending of energy between the mercurial frequencies and vibrations and the Venetian frequencies and vibrations. So we'll be talking about that as well. But in the context of the Saturn energy going on, that means that Saturn while trining the north node or trining the south node, while sextiling the north node is also exactly squaring Venus, who is ruling the north node. What does this mean for us, you guys? This means that while we're going through this process of release, right? While we are letting go, moving on, realizing that we can't continue doing something or going in a certain direction or being in a certain relationship, that we've got to make a change, that we've got to do something different. The planet ruling, you know, that which is different that we are preparing to do next, what we are trying to do, you know, what we are trying to break away from in order to go towards that energy, that future path is experiencing a bit of like constriction or limitation or hold back, draw back, uh, frustration conflict okay so this could be bringing up like a bit of just some more difficult um feelings feeling isolated feeling lonely feeling like we can't relate to anyone feeling aloof feeling unable to express ourselves with the mercury venus mutual reception going on when we have mercury and venus in mutual reception we're thinking about what we want we're thinking about what we desire and we like to talk about it we like to express ourselves we want to say what's on our heart we're very open and affectionate but with the square to Saturn there, this is um, a control or a limitation or a suppression of that expression or of those feelings and of those sentiments. So, or, or slowdown or constriction. This is things appearing to not be moving forward in the way that we need them to that makes us or allows us to feel like that optimism and that hope towards the future path that we're actually in the process of moving towards as we go through this process of culmination and as we go through this process of endings. So if you're following me still, it may just be a bit of like an emotionally repressive weekend. Like we may feel low, we may feel like, you know, just like low vibe. Like we may feel again, just feel like nobody understands us. Like we can't relate to anybody. Like um, we're just, we're like in it alone. Like it's like us against the world. Like we're never gonna fit in. And it's most likely emotionally as a result of, okay, um, us realizing that we no longer fit in with this group or that we no longer have this belief system or that, you know, we no longer can do this job or like we no longer can live in this certain way or we no longer can um, like be a part of this like interpersonal dynamic or this financial partnership or, um, you know, it has it's probably could have a lot to do with like resources and finances and financial partnerships and um, transactions and deals and negotiations and stuff like that going on as well. Partnerships, uh, also, you know, relationships all types of relationship dynamics but we could just be feeling a bit sort of like bummed or just held back or withdrawn or it's just kind of a cold distant energy in terms of like the affection and the heart and the communication kind of flowing freely um isolated just like no one gets us we don't fit in anywhere and really reconsidering what we want we really want to try not to internalize this energy though. We don't want to sort of like turn against ourselves or um, feel like we need to like repress our own wants and desires and feelings in this energy because that could also be a way that this is coming into fruition. But to be honest with the Saturn dynamic, I do feel like this is more so as a result of us realizing we're at the end of a serious phase of our lives, not totally seeing the direction this is taking us or the new beginnings that are right around the corner yet and maybe feeling 
feeling just a bit triggered or a bit fearful of whether or not we are going to find a state of like comfort and balance and security and harmony and love and beauty in our lives again once we move on from this past phase. This is also, of course, you know, we're talking about the Taurus Scorpio axis. This is going to be disrupting comfort zones. But I will tell you, as we move through the weekend and as we move through the rest of this month, there is a major sense of novelty, okay? Like, expect the unexpected season. We have a whole Mercury retrograde cycle that is comprised of Mercury conjunct Uranus. That is... For, well, it's total epiphanies, it's awakenings hitting us out of nowhere that totally change our mind or switch up our mind or change our perspective or the way that we're seeing things. But it's also like a sense of excitement or like things happening that we didn't expect that sort of like electrify our experience somehow or like really like turn us on mentally or um, just make us feel very like mentally stimulated or alive or excited about something. So, you know, we do have that that is going to be and that's that's happening in the sign of Taurus also where the north node is which is ruled by Venus right now which is in the sextile to Saturn so you know there will be unexpected people places things situations ideas mindset shifts coming in over this next couple of days this next couple of weeks that um help us to feel you know more positive about the endings or the transitions or whatever is going on now um or whatever we feel like is sort of like repressed or held back again this could definitely have to do with like the movement of plans as well we may feel like like plans or deals are sort of like stagnant or not going the way that we want to um this could also create a sense of like inner conflict and stuff like that but for the most part, you know, just holding back, withholding, or the love, affection, communication, feelings generally. This could also indicate having to have maybe some difficult conversations about our feelings and about what needs to end. Uh, that could also really be coming up in this energy, like some very like heartfelt, difficult um, things to talk about in relation to the endings or to like the current state of things or what needs to change or what needs to be done different moving forward. So we've got all of that, but it's interesting, you know, the Sabian symbol is coming through on Friday. The sun is at 25 degrees of Aries. A double promise reveals its inner and outer meanings. We've got the earth at 25 degrees of uh, Libra, always in opposite to the sun. The sight of an autumn leaf brings to the pilgrim the sudden revelations of the mysteries of life and death. So, you know, we're talking about endings and beginnings, the mysteries of life and death, the north node and the south node, and the aspects to Saturn, like the lord of time, the lord of karma, the lord of like the material, physical world. We're talking about a double promise reveals the inner and outer meanings, okay? So, on one hand, whatever's happening right now, you know, it's got, it's got one meaning, you know, these endings that are coming into fruition, but those endings are also representing these new beginnings, which is the second layer of meaning that these experiences are bringing to us now as well. So there's a dualistic nature to things, <laughs> Venus and the mutual reception with Gemini ruling the position of the North node, these double promises, endings and beginnings past and future sort of merged into one and it's our job to find the meaning in both at at this point in time we've also got venus at five degrees of gemini in the energy on friday a radical magazine or publication asking for action displays a sensational front page there could be some just like unexpected news information again like people places situations things, ideas, epiphanies coming up that like really change things for us in some way or make something really known to us or sort of motivate us or inspire us to do something, to move away from something, to have a difficult conversation, like who knows in one way or another. But that is the position for Venus and the energy on, on Friday as well. So you know, holding back, slowing down negotiations, deals, partnerships, relationships that are in the process of forming um, because also though of the endings going on now as well. Any, I do feel like also in the context of anything that seems to be like stagnant or being repressed or held back or constricted in terms of the forward flow and momentum of it right now, especially in terms of those deals, negotiations, partnerships, relationships, financial 
based stuff i think it's probably because of endings happening elsewhere along like the chain reaction of events that would lead to that forward flow of that energy you know what i mean so it's like wherever the stagnation is happening now i think it's because of somewhere like back in the chain of events leading to that forward momentum there being a need or there being just like situations of endings coming up you know what I mean like for example like if you are experiencing like a hold up for one reason or another or you're waiting on something in order for like another thing to happen like I don't know in terms of like paperwork or like who knows you know what I mean but it's likely because there is an ending somehow that is affecting the ability for that to move forward so that's sort of how i'm seeing this as well saturn in the square to venus this could also be applying pressure um in relationships like social pressures somehow that may be interfering with our ability to move forward or to um like detach release ourselves from something like that also finances one thing needs to end in order to start another so endings and beginnings indicated simultaneously these cascading endings and beginnings fresh ideas versus old beliefs coming through as well venus in the sign of gemini and the mutual reception with mercury this is these fresh ideas this changing perspective these shifting tastes that we have going on right now and saturn in the sign of pisces this is about our ideals our beliefs okay our, our visions and our fantasies about stuff and saturn rules time this is old beliefs against new ideas that may also or new preferences desires that may also be sort of how this energy is manifesting so what needs to give so that we can start over fresh also you guys we are in a black moon day on friday we are in a black moon day on saturday as well the black moon is in leo right now whenever we have the black moon um activated by the moon's transit through either aquarius or leo the black moon works in polarity so whenever we have the moon in the sign where the black moon is or the moon opposing where the black moon is this is going to activate that black moon energy on these deeper emotional levels and the sign of Leo, this can be bringing up fears, worries, insecurities, doubts about our status, about our, our level of personal power, about our ability also to like enjoy our lives, to feel alive, to shine, you know what I mean? To get the recognition that we feel like we deserve for like who we truly are, to be seen for who we really are. All these type of things could be could be coming up this can also have to do with like our strength and courage and loyalty things along those lines especially you know in the context of these endings maybe there's some commitments that have been going on for a long period of time that have run their course that have come to the end and you know we are moving away from them and maybe it's triggering these feelings of betrayal or abandonment or lack of loyalty and we are having to sort of like internally come up against these type of shadows like this could be just one of the pff, bajillions of examples how this uh these dynamics could be playing out but that's like sort of the situation so relationships finances you know discomfort also like our own personal status our own personal reputation our own personal like need for love attention affection you know also with the saturn venus square like that is likely to be at a minimum this weekend so that is another reason maybe why people will be being triggered along those lines like people just not showing affection not showing love sort of withholding these type of things and then people wondering you know if there's something wrong with them if they're not lovable and that's why they're not getting the affection bringing up these fear so that could be like sort of another thing playing out in relationship dynamics throughout the course of the weekend these inner conflicts between our thoughts and our feelings going on as well along the Taurus lines there could also really be um with this energy the way it is there could also be really feelings Venus square Saturn of worthlessness or questioning our own value questioning our own potential like questioning our own worth like issues with our relationship to ourselves or um, just being like personally critical and stuff like that we really don't want to allow ourselves to turn that inward and to sort of like internalize um just these more perhaps like negative self-perceptions that may be coming up right now as well because that is also just an indication um that we can kind of experience in this energy as a result of the feelings of loneliness and unable being unable to relate and stuff like that that can also come up but remember we also do have Mercury, Venus in the mutual reception and we want to make choices regarding worth, value, potential and what we want to build going forward. This is really 
more so where our mind is geared. There's a very future focused mental energy going on over the course of this weekend. And that is sort of where this North Node Saturn energy is pulling us. But the emotional energy is what is more geared towards the past, towards what we're moving away from, towards what we're letting go of. So that's kind of how that, uh, how that dynamic is playing out. So that's basically what I have to say for the energy for Friday. Moving into Saturday, Friday is like the, the big energy day of the weekend. This is when we have the exact Saturn Venus square. This is the day that Saturn moves into the exact trying to, um, the south node and this is also the day when we have the exact moon black moon opposition so i will say the energy for friday is the dominant force sort of that's carrying us through the weekend and energy saturday is very much uh just like riding on the heels of what came up in the energy on saturday we still start the day on saturday with the moon still in the sign of aquarius it will move into the sign of pisces though on saturday and form the conjunction to saturn so you know while Friday is sort of like the main uh, event day in terms of the energetic activations this weekend, it is being sort of expanded upon, accentuated, and like sort of like an exclamation point at the end on Saturday because of the moon coming into the alignment with Saturn. Now on Saturday, Venus will have moved out of exact square to Saturn. So this activation is no longer exact, exact to the degree, but you know, they're only one orb apart. This is still a very close aspect and for the moon to be right there as well. Definitely we are still very much on this emotional level engaged in this period of, you know, this active karmic release represented through the south node Saturn trine, but also perhaps these emotional and internal feelings of just being, uh, you know, lonely, isolated, just feeling a bit more like just low vibe, right? Negative, um, not the greatest. Okay. So that as a result of the moon's placement on Saturday, so we're not going to internalize that, you know, we're not really going to attach ourselves to this energy. The moon moves quickly. Venus is moving out of the square. This is literally only like the vibe of the weekend. By the time that we get into next week, you guys, um, the vibe is definitely going to shift and things are going to get a little crazy. Honestly, this the third week that we have coming up of April is kind of like mm, all over the place. We got lots of big energy coming up and we're not going to be feeling the way that we're feeling this week and especially in the black moon energy as well. Like this is definitely like taking us down. Okay. But we're not going to stay there. So no worries. And again, don't overly attach to this energy. Um, energy on Saturday is, you know, like I said, on one level, emotionally exacerbating these feelings of loss, surrender, isolation, not being able to relate and stuff like that. But on another level, we do have, as I mentioned, this like incoming energy of excitement and novelty and expect the unexpected or unanticipated change via news information, ideas, conversations, meetings, and whatever else that is really shaking things up and adding a level of newness and excitement. So it's like, it's almost like, you know, we may be sort of dwelling in these negative feelings, but yet like in the back of our mind, it's like we can feel something coming. Like we know it's not the end. Like we know, even though it's the end, it's not truly over and you know there's like a brighter day right around the corner like that could sort of be building within us on one level even though on another level we're sort of suffering and just feeling like really low or down in this energy. So on Saturday, you know, the main things that we are looking at, the moon, like I said, will leave Aquarius, enter the sign of Pisces, where it will conjunct Saturn, try in the south node, sextile the north node, square Venus, make all the same aspects that uh, were happening in the energy on Friday, except for now we're talking about the moon there. This is that emotional trigger and this is... Um, just accentuating like i said exacerbating this energy however when the moon does leave aquarius we are also transitioning out of the black moon energy so on one hand you know this is the moon saturn conjunction this is 
not, you know, riding so high. But on the other hand, we are out of the shadows to one extent as well. So that's a positive. Also on Saturday, this Mercury Venus mutual reception, Mercury is slowing down, preparing to go retrograde in the sign of Taurus. We've got mental changes coming up, changing our minds, preferences, tastes, reconsidering what we want, value, prioritize, and love. Major themes starting this weekend and heading throughout the course of the next several weeks, this entire Mercury retrograde process. Process. Mercury is also only four degrees out from Uranus in the sign of Taurus in the energy on Saturday. Um, Mercury is going to be in a conjunction to Uranus from now through when he goes retrograde. And because Mercury is stationing retrograde in a conjunction to Uranus, Mercury will not meet the degree of Uranus. Okay. He will, I believe station retrograde two degrees out from Uranus, but this is a pretty close conjunction. This is going to color the nature of our entire Mercury retrograde process. Uh, this Mercury retrograde season and we will be in this dynamic of energy until Mercury comes back hits the same degree where he went retrograde then the next couple days forms the exact conjunction to Uranus finally moves forward out of degree range with Uranus so that's gonna be a while that's gonna be a couple of weeks I'm not sure the exact date when the Mercury Uranus conjunction post retrograde will be but we're talking a couple of weeks here so expect the unexpected season is mercury retrograde season this year and we are moving into this energy now so you know while on one hand again these endings and more challenging emotional experiences are weighing us down um as we are graduating as we are releasing as we are moving on as we are metamorphosizing and as we are really okay redefining our reality in our own personal role in it on the other hand unexpected people, places, conversations, things, scenarios, opportunities, uh, ideas are going to be popping up that awaken us to something like really profound or create some sense of excitement or a sense of, again, this electricity or just this newness um, that changes things for us or, you know, shows us the potential of positive changes underway that really changes the game for us and somehow in a way that we had not been able to anticipate beforehand again this word novelty this is like it's like it's like what we needed but we didn't know we needed um and we couldn't have anticipated or expected but when it happens it changes everything and it makes everything that happened like makes sense okay like that's the type of stuff that i feel like we're moving towards and that is happening now um and that this energy is ultimately uh, like trying to bring into alignment. Okay. Um, so that's really what we're dealing in on Saturday, the same type of energy, the same Saturn influence from Friday exacerbated by the moon. Also this Mercury Venus mutual reception energy, really, uh, thinking about what we value, what we're worth, what relationships we want to be in the relationship to ourselves. And, you know, simultaneously this building anticipation or, um, just like, uh, something opening our mind or changing our perspective in a way that we hadn't expected or anticipated as well with this Mercury Uranus energy going on. On Saturday, we have the sun at 26 degrees of Aries, a man possessed of more gifts than he can hold. And we also have the earth at 26 degrees of Libra and e an eagle and a large white dove constantly turning into one another. So these themes of metamorphosis, into you know and we're talking about birds we're talking about peace and we're talking about freedom and this process of you know one becoming one leading to the other leading to the other to the other culminating at a man possessed of more gifts than he can hold like bringing us to the truth of our authentic potential and the fulfillment associated with that showing us our gifts showing us our our talents showing us what we need to do to activate our destiny to live in alignment with the divine vision of like our soul's purpose and why we came to this experience a man possessed of more gifts than we can hold like that is what universe is trying to align us with at this period of time of endings and beginnings as we you know enter this new phase of our lives that perhaps could have a lot more to do with peace and freedom and the perpetual experience of that cycle as opposed to maybe the cycles that we are detaching ourselves from or the programming of the past that has been working against you know our ability to go in that direction so that's what i feel like you know really in terms of the energy for saturday now sunday we sunday is 
uh, the more low-key day of the weekend, okay? We don't really have a whole bunch playing out on Sunday. We are, again, still sort of riding the waves of what has been happening Friday and Saturday. The main difference in the energy on Sunday is that the moon in Pisces will, you know, move through Pisces and will now be forming a trine to Mars in Cancer. So we have a moon Mars trine that is playing out in the energy on Sunday. Now on one hand, moon trine Mars, this can a lot of times have to do with expressions of anger and an inability to control our anger and just like internalized feelings of anger sort of like erupting again this is happening in water signs so there could be just some very angry feelings that are sort of spilling out or flowing out in the energy on Sunday but on another level the moon and Mars together this gives us a lot of um it, it, it's, it's passions running high okay working towards our vision the moon in Pisces Mars and Cancer working towards our vision trying to make something happen activating the deeper levels of our heart and soul strong spiritual and intuitive energy that is helping to guide our action if we're coming from the higher octaves of this energy follow intuition trust your gut and sort of act along those lines this um is a facilitated energy this is an assisting energy that is coming through on friday we could feel very inspired or motivated also to sort of care for ourselves and others and the energy on Sunday. Did I just say Friday? If I said Friday, I meant Sunday. So this is a very good day on Sunday to actively engage in some type of self-care, self-love, caring for others, nurturing others, things to do with the home and the family, putting a lot of, um, you know, getting really in touch with like the mother vibe and stuff as well and putting a lot of our energy towards that type of thing. Like that is going to be the most positive expression of the energy on Sunday. You know, of course, we still have the exact Saturn south node trine. We are in day three of this energy. We still have Mercury moving towards Uranus. Mercury is slowing down in the sky. So we are still in this expect the unexpected energy as we will be. We still have Mercury and Venus in the mutual reception, this blending of of, you know what we're thinking about and what we want what we value what we desire sort of like just on our mind and with mercury about to go retrograde maybe really um rethinking our desires our preferences our tastes like i said and you know there's a few different indications for these like changing tastes and preferences coming up at this point in time but mercury venus and mutual reception uranus and the sign of taurus like these are all indicating that type of thing so people may be literally like switching on a dime you know what i mean like maybe it, it could even be like maybe even in terms of like food and it's like in, in terms of everything scents music what we like to wear how we like to dress ourselves and or well wear and dress ourselves but like how we like to look what we want our surroundings to look like even like what colors we're drawn to like what food we want the type of people that we're attracted to like what we find valuable what we prioritize all that type of stuff. Every like sensory type of experience essentially um, is up for a redesign or just maybe, you know, maybe we're just changing the way that we feel about it as this energy plays out over this next couple of weeks. So, you know, we've got that going on, but generally also, you know, taking the initiative to start something while we're in this endings energy like that also could be going on moon trine mars like kind of wanting to get something going that is you know in alignment again like i said like with the deeper levels of our heart and of our soul so that's pretty much what i gotta say for the energy as we have it playing out this weekend the sun on sunday 27 degrees of aries is one of my favorite sabian symbols through imagination a lost opportunity is regained the earth is at 27 degrees degrees of Libra and airplane sails high through the bright clear sky so an elevated perspective is what is going to give us clarity being able to see the whole picture the bird's eye view to see things from this place of like personal awareness and like conscious ascension like in on one level is what is going to give us a sense of clarity as we move uh through this energy through this time of endings and beginnings and through imagination a lost opportunity is regained saturn is in pisces um everything and anything is possible right now 
if we can believe it. If we can truly, truly believe it and do the work to stay in alignment with our spiritual truths and with our faith and with our higher selves, we can ground our dreams into reality. Um, through imagination, a lost opportunity is regained. The end is not the end right now. Like I'm saying, the what seems to be the end of the road in this energy is really but just the beginning. <laughs> okay, so, you know, what we may feel as though we're losing is really not a loss at all. It is the beginning. It is the start of what we're truly meant to be, where we're truly meant to go, and what we thought we lost is really yet to be gained. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys, for the energy as it's coming together this weekend. Um, again, probably not like the most like upbeat like uh best positive vibe weekend we had that last week with the jupiter influence going on we've got saturn going on this weekend but it's productive it's necessary it's moving us in the right direction it's you know it's the sobering influence it is a serious influence we do need to take things seriously but it's helping us actually to stabilize ourselves and to move forward again in this better direction. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys. Oh, okay. Well, I went to shuffle and the cards just came out. So we've got two synchronicity cards that we are going to talk about today. They say, bless them and walk on and turn off the world. So these are the messages that universe wants us to know as we're going through this energy this weekend. Turn off the world. Folly is joy to him, destitute of wisdom. Proverbs 15, 21. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for joy in externals. Finding joy in lurid drama, hate-filled music, and other synthetic entertainment. You will find joy within yourself. Turn off the noise and listen to the voice within. Search for wisdom within. Be happy with yourself inside and you will find joy. So that is, you know, something that we need to keep in mind this weekend. And that also makes sense in the um, Saturn-Venus square that we have playing out. And bless them and walk on. The words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly proverbs 26 22 you can see through the darkness of another's mind you are not responsible for their negative thinking and you cannot change their mind do not get involved bless them and walk on again venus square saturn okay while venus and mercury are in mutual reception like this says, this could definitely bring up some negative thinking and we don't want to get in the way of, you know, other people's processes this weekend. We've got this black moon energy going on as well. Black moon is notorious for uh, projecting out what we are not wanting to face within ourselves. So bless them and walk on you guys. This is advice for this weekend as well as turn off the world. Again, I'm going to say it, it makes perfect sense in terms of the astrology because we're talking about the Saturn influence. This is a, this is hermit mode, okay? This is a need to be more withdrawn. This is a need to be more isolated. We're likely to be feeling that way because that's likely to be what's going on. This is a need to withdraw. This is a need to hold ourselves back, to restrain, to just be more internalized and to be less just out there and everybody else's like business and everybody in our business and like all that type of stuff. So two synchronicity cards coming out that are both talking about, you know, sort of the need to mind our own business this weekend and to really just focus on like our own personal like healing or work or whatever we've got going on and not trying to like meddle in whatever is going on with other people. So that is what I have to say today, you guys. Energy for the weekend that is coming at us. If you guys liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, you guys. Share it with your friends if you think they would like this type of astrology content as well. Uh, leave me comments, you guys. I love your comments. So grateful for you. If you have experiences this weekend going on that are, you know, in alignment with what I've been talking about in this report, please let me know in the description box below. I love to know what's going on with you guys as well. Not the description box, Aubrey. The comment box below. <laughs> I have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, a website, um, uh, Instagram, some other social media stuff. Those 
are in my description box below. And come back with me next week, you guys. We've got a whole nother week of astrology. We've got a big week of astrology next week. We've got our number two Aries new moon going on that is also a solar eclipse. We've also got Mercury stationing retrograde. Um, it's likely to be, like I said, sort of like a bit off the wall type of week. Could be a kind of a bizarre, strained week. So I'll be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you then, guys. Have a beautiful weekend and until next time. Bye, guys.